something with you. I don't know if you know about this story, but I'm going to share with you as of now. Now, there is a guy, you know, they're talking about this to the court, but we're going to go to step by step because I keep getting like in of the story because I want to find out what exactly happened in the story, you know, in the beginning before it gets to this part where, you know, um, Jim Jalal Smith Riley, 23 years old, is falling out. Now, this happened in November the 18th, 2013 at 10 p.m. While sitting in a car on Cartridge Avenue in Norwood, Portia and her boyfriend, Aaron Martin, was robbed and shot, and Portia died three days later. Okay, now, there was inside this car right here. And it was shot, you know, and the thing about it was that, um, while Portia and her boyfriend was out the car, they had, um, uh, Portia's boyfriend, Aaron had said that somebody, you know, knocked on the car door and stuff, and then when they turned around, you know, basically it was a robbery and stuff. It was a box of robbery, and basically, um, they shot Aaron in the head, and Portia was killed. Um... I'll give you ideas back to what happened from the beginning. Check this out. When police make two arrests in the death of Portia Brooks. John Genovese is outside a news conference right now. John, what's the latest? Well, so far, police have identified one of these suspects as this man, 22-year-old Jalil Markeith Smith Riley. We're told he is now facing one count of murder. Again, a news conference is taking place as we speak here at Norwood City Hall. Police right now are not releasing the name of the second suspect, but say he has admitted his involvement and is in jail out of state. And we're told a third suspect in this case has since died. Now, this was a situation that captured the attention of the entire tri-state. Back in November 2013, a passerby found Portia Brooks and her boyfriend bleeding and unconscious. They were both shot multiple times. The couple was inside a parked car off Carthage Avenue. Now, Brooks died at the hospital several days later. Her boyfriend, Aaron Martin, survived. At the time, police said they believed robbery was the motive behind this shooting. Surveillance video captured several people who, at the time, police believed were involved, but there were no solid leads. Again, we have seen family members starting to arrive here at Norwood City Hall. We are expecting more information in the next few minutes, and we will bring that to you okay, as we yeah. have it. So basically, you know, they're letting you know that there was a robbery and stuff, and they was looking for the person, you know, who did it. So they did sketches and stuff like that, used crime stoppers, and, and you know, um, they put out, um, you know, letters and stuff of crime stoppers, and they also used this picture. Now, as they got his pictures and everything and stuff like that, um, they wanted to find out exactly what had happened. You know, they couldn't find the guy because allegedly they said it was three people that was um, they saw on the cameras and stuff, but only one person showed up in reference to um, the robbery, and that was um, Jalal. I'll just say Riley because these names. Um, I'll just say Riley. So Raleigh just um, was the only one that, um, you know, they had as reference to the pictures and stuff. So basically, before we get too fast, I'm going to show you ideas exactly what went down as far as the interview with Aaron Martin. So you can see what happened as far as the storyline and what went down that night from his own well, it, it, it has been a year since Portia Brooks was killed and Aaron Martin wounded in what appears to be a random robbery. Well, tonight, for the first time, Local 12's Deborah Dixon has the face of the killer and the only interview with the man who survived. And there's a car that's pulled over that has a, a lady in it and she's bleeding. There was a guy outside of the car who looked like he had, like he was bleeding from multiple spots. The guy outside the car bleeding from a bullet to the head was 21-year-old Aaron Martin. The girl in the driver's seat, the one not moving, 
his dying girlfriend, Portia Brooks. This is Aaron's first interview since that night a year ago. I just want, want to know his motive for doing what he did. Like, because we was just two random people. We had no association with the streets or him of uh, no nature. And for it to take that turn, like, it just, it didn't need to go there. Aaron and Portia, young, in love, hard working with big dreams. Dreams destroyed in seconds here on Carthage Avenue. She drove him home. They were still sitting in the car when there was a tap on the window. A man with a gun ordering Aaron out. From the moment I stepped outside the car, he had a gun pointing at me. Uh, I stepped outside the car, and then he's like, uh, -uh give me your, your money or whatever, all you have. And then, uh, so uh, I proceeded to go inside my pockets and pull, up, uh, pull out my wallet, so all I had was a card because I don't get, uh, carry cash. Is that why Aaron was shot in the head because he didn't have money to steal? And why Portia? She didn't even get out of the car. Just two good kids. Could have been my kids. Right, it is cold, barbaric. A security camera outside a school two blocks away shows three men walking toward Carthage Avenue right before the murder. The one guy that did all the shooting was the primary robber. He was in charge and he was and he put an end to it by, sh by shooting both of them and killing one of them. Sometimes in the dark of night when something traumatic happens, it can be as clear as day. One eyewitness said that's what happened that night when he saw the face of the killer. He helped the police artist draw this sketch of the high cheekbones, the high forehead, the thin bridge of his nose, and those cold, dead eyes. I'm just missed, like, I won't be aware to uh, laugh anymore, like, see her smile or hear about what she want to accomplish her dreams. Portia was working to make those dreams come true, deciding in third grade she was going to work with animals. In high school, she attended Hughes Zoo Academy and was working at a dog resort and spa and training to be a pet care technician when she was murdered. Murdered by the kind of person who doesn't dream about making a difference. I don't know how long she was with, with him uh, after he shot me, and I just wish I could have been there to comfort her in her last moments. Aaron fought to survive the bullet to his head. He had to learn how to walk, talk, and eat all over again. It's too dangerous to remove it, so he lives with it. The memory loss, the dreams lost. So many things that I wanted to do. Aaron worked at Buskin to save money for college. He was going for a promotion when he was shot. College isn't going to happen now. I got one uh, to start summer. I would start school in the uh, summertime. Uh, but like my memory is pretty bad. Like after the incident, now I don't think I will be able to like actually put back, put forward my best foot. And we tell them like you are here for a reason and. You might not know it yet, but you're here for a reason. April worries that the killer is still on the streets. Every time I see a murder that happened, I always think back to their case. Was this the same person? Did he strike again? Aaron put the money he saved for college in a special reward account if police need it. It's all he can do for Portia now. I feel like it was my role, like to protect her. I was there with her and it wasn't anything I could do to help her. Aaron says it would help him to know why. What did the killer gain? The problem is, for what's lost, no answer makes sense. I'll get used to that. <sighs> okay. You know, that's very horrific. You know, it's a lot. But, um, this is what happened. They found him and everything, and they, you know, they did the sketchy stuff. They found him on crime stoppers and stuff, and, you know, he pleaded guilty to the crime and stuff. And basically, um, when they sentenced him, he fell out. You know, he just became this passive-aggressive type of thing. First you are a killer, then a robber. First a robber, then a killer. Then you want to act all submissive, like, like you can't understand why 
this happens. Now, this is how he starts crying as if he becomes the victim. Hamilton County Check courtroom today after a man who admitted killing animal lover Portia Brooks and shooting her boyfriend Aaron Martin in the head was sentenced. Brooks and Martin were shot in 2013 because they did not have any money to steal. Jaleel Smith Riley admitting to the crime he confessed, pleaded guilty, then tried to drop that plea today. Judge Charles Kubicki did not let that happen. Smith Riley was sentenced after families gave statements. His family asking for mercy. Her family asking for a life sentence. He took her from me. She was beautiful. Her beauty was not just skin deep. She had a beautiful heart, mind, and soul. She was a little sister, a big sister, a niece, a cousin, granddaughter, and my daughter. The judge sentenced Smith Riley to life in prison without parole for Brooks' murder and more time after that for shooting Martin and still more time for using a gun. Smith Riley collapsed to the floor. The family say this was the first step toward healing. At 5.30 on Local 12, we're going to have more on what was said in court and an interview with Aaron, who still has dreams, even though he lives with an injury from in that every bullet. aspect of this case. It was an incredibly emotional day in court. When the judge handed down that sentence to Jalil Smith Riley, he became very emotional, even collapsing at one point. But the families of those victims tell us this is way too little, too late. Four defendants serve a term of life without parole. As to count four for the offense of attempted murder. This reaction from a confessed killer was the last in a series of intense moments in this Hamilton County courtroom and exactly what the victim's families asked for. I have to deal with life without portion, so he should deal with life without, without parole. With his request to withdraw his guilty plea denied and death penalty off the table, the families of Portia Brooks and Aaron Martin pleaded with Judge Charles Kubicki to hand down the maximum sentence. Smith Riley's family begged for a shorter one. With no criminal record outside of that night, they believed he had the capacity to be rehabilitated. But at one point, Brooke's mother, Sharon, said her daughter's killer took her life too. Now she says her family can move toward peace. Right now, it's dark. Um, I'm sure with the help of my, my family, my daughter, my, my, my son, I'm sure I'll be able to one day, but um, this day marks the first day of being able to do that. During today's hearing, Smith Riley's attorney said he has never had a client try and reverse a guilty plea in a murder trial. It's a decision he says he advised against. Chris okay, you said that, you know, I don't know. I don't know. You know, the sad part about it is, allegedly, you know, he's killed that girl, Portia. Beautiful girl, Portia. Killed her. She was an animal lover. Killed her. The boyfriend wasn't even, when they shot him, he blacked out basically. He don't even know exactly what even happened to her. Because he had a bullet in his head. Now he can't go to college and stuff because the simple fact of the matter is that, you know, his brain is just shot and he can't hold memory and stuff. So, you know, Aaron, I'm, you're in my prayers and stuff as far as that. Now, the thing that gets me is that allegedly they said there was three people and um, uh, Raleigh is the only one that they found, you know, they got him. But what about the other two? Now, I don't know about the other two as far as being at large. You know, did they find them or, you know, on the search band as well? But basically, um, you know, it's horrible. 
you know, and the mother had to say this as far as, you know, as far as the ladder. My rose was gone. Someone broke my rose one day. On day one, I prayed for my rose to bloom again. On day two, I continued to pray to bloom again. But it wasn't meant to be. My rose was gone on day three. I think there's a sigh of relief that this um, horror suspense movie is over where we can actually move to the next stage of our life, of that healing. It's kind of hard to heal when you're constantly bombarded with court dates and this and that. But um, we are relieved and we're extremely thankful for Norwood Police, the prosecutor's office, the judge, all of the support and um, the love and all of the prayers that we have gotten for over the last almost three years now. But it is a sigh of relief. Um, but you saw right now, it's dark. Um, I'm sure with the help of my, my family, my daughter, my, my, my son, I'm sure I'll be able to one day, but um, this day, my first day of being able to do that, um, it's going to take time. It's going to take time for all of us um, to be able to come up out of this. But hey, at least for us, there is a light at the end of our time. Okay. You know, the mother, you're in my prayers as well. You know, this is horrible. But to be sitting inside of a car at 10 o'clock at night, just with your boyfriend or a significant other, and all of a sudden get shot for a robbery because the simple fact of the matter is that you didn't have the money that you thought he thought that they had him in. And the simple fact of the matter is he went to his pocket and all of a sudden he gets shot. Anyway, that being said, I just want to share this story with you because I want people to look at the fact that when people commit crimes and they kill someone, Look at how he acts as if he's the victim. If you wouldn't know any better, you would think he was just some poor little guy just being sentenced for something he didn't even do. Now he said he did it, so, you know, anyway, that being said. I just wanted to share this story with you because it's going through the internet and stuff, and they keep showing the part of him falling out. I want to find out from the beginning to the end exactly what happened. Anyway, that being said, I just wanted to share it with you and let you know that I love you, and I want to thank you for watching. Catch the rain.